Okay, so today we're going to talk about a few things. Passive tension, active tension. Then we're going to talk about the different types of shortened active insufficiency and lengthened active insufficiency, and also the slightly stretched position. So before we talk about passive tension and active tension, let's define what tension is. Tension is a pulling force. So anytime you're pulling on something, you are generating a force, and that is called tension. And we know that muscles, they don't push. The only type of force they provide is pulling. So the only force that they do is, is tension. And there are actually two ways that muscles can provide tension through passive tension and active tension. Okay, so for passive tension comes actually from stretching your muscles and them wanting to recoil provides a, a, a force or, or a tension force, a muscular force. Um, but it doesn't require ATP or anything. Um, what it comes from is the fascia of your muscles that wraps around your muscles being stretched and wanting to return to its original length. And then active tension is the, the tension or the force that you might expect. It comes from actin and myosin, um, the myosin pulling on the actin through all the muscle fibers in the muscle and overall it causes an overall contraction of the muscle. Okay, so it turns out that there is an ideal length for your muscles in order to generate, generate the ideal force. You don't want your muscles to be too stretched or too short or too contracted or shortened I guess would be the best word um, for the ideal force. You want them to be what is called in, in what is called the slightly stretched position. And the slightly stretched position is 90 to 120 percent of resting length. Okay, and by resting length I mean the length of your muscle when it's totally relaxed and not contracting. So when it is in that desired range of length you can see here I've drawn this diagram of a slightly stretched position and these are myosin the red and the black is actin and the blue things are, are binding sites and this doesn't actually this isn't what it actually looks like this is a very basic diagram but you can see that all four on, the, on this side, so all of the myosin is able to attach to the, the myosin binding sites here when it's in the slightly stretched position. If we go to here, to the shortened active its efficiency, you can see that the actin is so close together that one of the binding sites here can't bind to the actin because it's too close together. And I don't want you to think that there's only you know a certain amount of binding sites. This is just a diagram. Um, and then also in lengthened active insufficiency, the, the actin is pulled too far apart that, that the myosin can only actually reach two of the binding sites here. And the further you pull them apart, the less binding sites the myosin can reach. So these passive and or sh shortened active insufficiency, lengthened, lengthened active insufficiency um, have important implications. When you see uh, a high jumper going to jump, he, you don't see him bend down all the way down. You see him bend down a little bit as he prepares to, to jump. That's because his muscles are naturally going to the slightly stretched position. And it has various implications and, and is important for kinesiology.